And welcome to the Confound Millennial, starring Stephen Sturvin Michaels and featuring Taylor Barber of Left to Suffer. What's up, Taylor? What's popping? What's popping, man? What's popping, Doc? What's popping, man? I had a friend that used to co-host this podcast, man. Every time I had somebody on, he's like, "Hey, what's popping, Doc?" <laughs> I'm just your co-host reincarnated, bro. Oh yeah, <sighs> but uh, dude, chugging the monster. I got a bang over here. It's how yeah, I survived. Trying to stay alive right now, dude. That the caffeine like drives me through the day because usually I'm like lagging halfway through, but I'm I'm good. I'm hyped up right now. So I feel like that guy from the meme that's like uh this is three bang, two Adderall, one brain cell. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, it was like that way. He was like, What did I have for breakfast? Bang. What did I have for lunch? Bang. And then what did I have for dinner? A felony. A felony. <laughs> Oh man, love it! But you are Taylor Barber, the badass vocalist of Left to Suffer, and also, what's your solo thing again? Uh, phone booth. Phone booth? Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. You're a man of many talents, quite a vocal range. I know who you are. Your fans know who you are. But to my fans, could you explain a little bit of what Left to Suffer is? Left to Suffer is a uh deathcore metalcore adjacent band from atlanta georgia that has been around for two and a half years now and uh yeah we just be making really stupidly angry music it's all it is we're just pissed all the time so (laughs) it's it's like i was wondering i uh whenever i listen to somebody's music before i uh do the podcast um you know, I've listened to yours before as well, but I, you know, just binged it all day. And I like to think, I wonder what people are doing when they listen to this music. Cause for me, I'm like doing the dishes and shit, but I'm imagining everybody else is just pulling up, getting into fist fights. Yeah, dude. So a lot of our fans that I've realized are like weightlifters. So they'll just, they'll listen to us while they're in the gym. And a lot of like, uh, like people who do like, Pat, like power lifting like for like professions and stuff like they just are like yeah it's like my max song like gets me like super pumped and i'm just like whoa when i get in there so i think that that's really cool that like there's like a portion of our demographic or people who are just like balls to the wall in the gym like throwing up like hundreds of pounds of weight like just jamming the lts like i'm like hell yeah dude like get your fucking shit dude that's sick yeah, you got to have some badass music when you're doing badass weightlifting like that. Like even even when uh I'm just regular working out, you got to have a badass playlist. Absolutely. I mean, I played uh, I played football pretty much like the whole first portion of my life. So, that whole like weightlifting and like being in the in the weight room every day is like a very common thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> so like I, I get the struggle and they like I get like the, I mean I was listening to shit Napalm Death and fucking Cannibal Corpse and White Chapel and Dyer and His Murder before my football games or like before like while I was in the weight room like doing my PRs and shit and it was just uh it's cool that like now we're that for somebody else. You know what I mean? It's just like that's really cool okay. that they're like, Man, I need to put on anger by left to suffer and then go out here and just bust these reps out and i'm like hell yeah bro i just think it's really cool i just think it's cool that people listen to our music in general that's like a concept (laughs) right i mean it's crazy it's the craziest fucking thing to put out art of any kind and realize oh people people enjoy this what the hell it's mind-blowing dude yeah and uh sorry you go ahead no, I'm just saying it was just it's a it's it's like a hard 
thing to think about because like so there's spotify for artists and it'll tell you how many people are listening like at a time throughout mm-hmm. the day and it's like you know ours stays at like one to like 200 people on like a good day and stuff and it's just like there's just always a hundred people in the world listening to our band like at all times like that is just such a weird thing to think about that there's just like it's like a, it's a bunch of different people, obviously. You know what I mean? Because if there's a hundred like consecutively, you know what I mean? Like it's just like it's it's a repetitive thing. There's not just the same hundred people listening to the, our band for all day. You know what I mean? Right. So, <laughs> and it's like it's crazy to even think about like our our just our stuffs being cycled around the world like that. It's just uh, it's just unreal. <laughs> the internet's wild. Dude, it's. It's a crazy lawless wasteland out there on the internet, man. Pretty cool if you figure out how to use it, man. But it is definitely a very intense, intense place to be for sure. That's the thing about podcasting is you're you're fighting the whole internet by yourself. You don't have a team usually. Yep. And uh, you have figured out a portion of the internet, though, through TikTok, correct? Yeah, I've uh, figured it out is a strong word, but because it's just like that app is so random, I guess, like would be the word. Like, it's just like, I don't understand, like there's no algorithm. So like you're, you're basically just posting videos and then they're just getting, I don't know how they get cycled through the for you page or anything, but I mean, I woke up one day and I had like 20,000 followers and I was just like, what and then now I'm at 40,000 or 42 now, 42,000, like approaching 50,000. And it's just like, I just don't understand how that app works. I get it to an extent, you know what I mean? Like, I understand it enough where like I could post videos and they do well and I can catch people's attention and I know like when to post, like, usually when things do better than others. But like, for the most part, it's pretty just like blind fire into an abyss and try to try to land something every once in a while. Yeah, I've I've tried my hand at TikTok and I don't understand that shit at all, man. It uh like I tried doing some uh Magic the Gathering ones for a little bit there and nobody watched a single one of them until I had been done and over with recording them. Sorry, I got a call. <laughs> You're good, man went sideways on me so you said magic the gathering sorry those uh am i still sideways no you're good now oh okay sorry Nah, you're good uh we did a podcast the other day where in the middle of it my co-host finally decided to show up and uh he couldn't figure out how to get his mic working And our guest was taking pictures of her computer screen and holding it up. This is what you got (laughs) to (laughs) do. Nice. I've actually been there before. I'm not going to lie. I did a podcast uh, two months ago or something like that. And uh, I had to do the same thing. I had to troubleshoot the, uh, their, their system for them. And I was like, okay, this is probably going to be a train wreck, but whatever. And it was, it was a train wreck. I'm going to be honest. That's the beauty of podcasts, man, is sometimes they're just train wrecks, but people are there. For I don't give a shit. Well. Yeah, honestly, podcasts are fun as fuck, dude. Like, I wish that I could do more of them. I just get so busy and then I forget about them half the time or like I'll be like, oh, my God, like I'm doing this one thing and then I'll just like overbook myself. It's a it's a problem. You know what I mean? I'll be like, yeah, I'm doing I, absolutely because I want to do everything. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, yeah, run it. Let's go. And then I'll just be like, fuck. I probably should have not done that because <laughs> like, I just like now I'm stressed and now I have like four things to fucking do. And it's just, yeah. Cause like life comes at me, uh, life comes at everybody at like a, a million miles an hour. So it's uh pretty hard to, to bob and weave through the forest of trees. You know what I mean? And like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know where you stand on uh, mental health and stuff, but for me, uh, like the last EP was about. (laughs) Yeah, I know, I know that, but uh, you know, uh, like one week I'll be 
up high, you know, like let's let's book this, 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 this. Next week's yep. going to be slammed. Let's do it. And then the next week comes. I'm like, oh fuck, why did I You're do like, this? I don't want to do this at all right now. I'm like, I'm not feeling it. Right. Is it is it bad if I smoke weed on your podcast or is that okay? Fire it up. All right. We haven't actually had anybody do it on the podcast before. We had one dude uh, wait until the very end, and he's like, are we off the air? Thank God. <coughs> he pulls out like just this giant fucking uh, vapor bag. Yeah, like, yeah. How the hell did you even get that? You're not even in a legal state. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just... Uh, crazy but nah we uh as long as you don't elon musk it and pass out on the show we good yeah no i've been smoking all pretty much all day so i'm good <laughs> i'm just you ever watch that, uh, getting dug with high podcast oh absolutely dude you ever see absolutely. the one where jack black is just spinning around in a chair for 30 fucking minutes yep <laughs> i love that shit dude I love watching people get high, to be honest with you. Right. It's, it's so like, enjoyable. Like I've been I've been sober for ten months now, but I'm That's always sweet. down to watch somebody get fucked up. <laughs> I love watching people get fucked up. <laughs> what live vicariously through people, you know? Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. That's why I don't I don't I do the same thing with drinking. I don't drink at all anymore. So nice. Yeah, I had a real rough time with drinking last year, and it's uh, yeah, that's that's that shit's done. <laughs> ship ship has sailed. But um, so you are a busy motherfucker. You're always putting something out, whether it be left to suffer, a cover, just some random shit you're working on, phone booth. Um, what do you think? is probably the uh your favorite like as far as like create getting your creative outlet out left to suffer for sure that's like my i mean that's my main source you know what i mean like that's the that's the main vein that flows through me i'm a i've i've dealt with like anger problems for pretty much my whole life, you know, ever since I was a kid, I've just been like, really, I struggle with just like not being getting fucking like super pressed. And I have found that left to suffer is like my only vice for that. I'll get it out. And like, that's why like, all of our music is so pissed is because like, I'm internally like my internal human. I may seem like this cool dude on the outside where I'm just like, ah, yeah, fuck it, dude. Like we're just getting high. We're having fun. But like on the inside, there's this like one little tiny guy who has like a really bad like anger management problem and he's just always in there like ah! like all the time like 24/7 dude I swear and he's just like on fire that's how it, that's how it feels you know what i mean and he's yeah. just in there at all times and like i'll just get like super aggravated about the dumbest shit sometimes dude like it'll just be like someone will sneeze like the wrong way that i'm and i'm just like instantly in my head i'm like Dude, fuck that person, bro. Like, I cannot believe that that just happened. And then I'm like, the other half of my brain is just like, all right, bro, like, what the hell was that? Like, chill the fuck out, dude. Like, so, so, like, I'll just, like, I'll bottle all this shit up. Not even necessarily, like, minuscule shit like that. I just meant, like, yeah. as, like, a funny reference. That's what I, that's what I mean. But, you know, things like, that I, really get to me, I'll, 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 I'll try to, like, I'll, I'll make sure that I'm not overreacting, you know, with, like, anger. And I'll put it and I'll just dump it into, you know, when I'm writing music for Left to Suffer. Because I'm sitting literally in the spot that I do all of our vocals in. I do it in my room. So, and I track myself. So, it's a, it's a, like a, a constant, like, way of not <laughs> being super aggravated by human existence, I guess. It's good to have that outlet, man. Uh and, but I totally get what you're talking about. Like, you know, I'm the kind of guy that somebody could be talking about beating my ass. I'm like, yeah, yeah, go fuck yourself. And then five minutes later, trying to like buckle up in my car and it's not buckling. I'm like, you fucking son of a. I'm just like, just bust the fucking window out. And I'm just like, ah. yeah. 
but yeah. uh but yeah that's my main that's my main like you know my artery for my uh for my my juices to get out but you know the, like I, obviously everyone goes through like sadness and stuff and then that's where like phone booth comes out and then music in general is just really cathartic you know I, it, it takes my mind off of stuff so if i'm like really stressed out about something i'll like sit down in front of the computer and i'll be like okay cool let's bust out a cover or like hey cool let's like track something you know what i mean let's do a, a stupid tiktok video or let's do whatever you know, it just it takes me into like a different headspace for a little bit where I'm not I don't have to just sit there and, you know, fester on thoughts over and over again, because that's when it gets shitty is when you're sitting there with the same thoughts and it's just like a stale pool of water in your head. Like you're not there's no there's no it's not going anywhere. You're just sitting there and it's recycling the same thing. You got to stimulate it with something else. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, you were talking about TikTok a second ago. Mm -hmm. Um it just reminded me uh, there's been quite an uproar on your TikTok about the fact that you cheat. Uh, oh, I that I fucking, yeah, whenever I'm doing my, uh, <laughs> like, I, I like I guess I fucking, like, voice record. I, I pre-record my stuff, you know, and that's not illegal. <laughs> like, I don't know, like, people, like, this, this is the, the, oh, my God, dude. Oh, I'm so glad that this got brought up. So fucking, there was this kid who was like, yo, it looks like you're lip syncing. And I was like, I am lip syncing. Like that's part, it's, <laughs> it's called, it's called produce, like you're, pro you're producing a video. Like, do you think that like people in music videos, they're not actually playing the song in your, in the music video that you, that you see of your favorite band. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Like you're not, they're half the time. They're not even plugged in. Like none of them are. And the, the, the drummer usually doesn't even have kick pedals. They're not playing the song. It's for show. And that's what it is. That's It's literally just, it's for visual content. And I sit there and I bust my ass on these vocals of me really doing my fucking vocals. And then people are just like, oh, yeah, well, this, I don't know. This, this video just doesn't line up to the audio. And it's just like, dude, you're an idiot. Like, you literally are just like, I want to hear you raw scream through nothing. It's like, why? I have videos like that on my account that you can go back and see that I ha I have raw videos of me screaming. Like, I just because I want to produce a video for that and, like, be able to, like, you know, put it out there and it not sound like I'm screaming over top of a track in my mom's basement. Like, that's, you know what I mean? Like, that's just not a thing. Like, I mean, it's, it's just fucking, it's funny as hell that people get pressed about stuff like that. And they're like, you're cheating. It's just like, no one's cheating, bro. Like it's, yeah. I'm literally doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm not cupping the mic. I literally, I record, I'm loud as fuck. Like my vocals are loud as shit. And people are just like, I don't know, man, this guy has all these plugins on his vocals. You know, I, I just don't trust him. I don't like, I think this guy's a fucking phony. And I'm like, all right, yeah, you're right. Every, every, vo yeah, every vocalist that you'll ever hear never uses plugins. I'm the only one, dude. I hope that, I hope that helps you sleep at night. <laughs> so stupid i use limited plugins too which is hilarious because like i i barely use plugins and it's mainly just to round it out where it sounds mixed into the track where i'm screaming over instead of just a raw di you know so funny but yeah i love people like that because i always i always respond with like are you okay, okay. <laughs> who hurt you dude like are you doing okay like what's going on you need to talk about something i don't know why you're in here think or thanks for the engagement <laughs> i appreciate your People comments are so stupid on the internet sometimes i love it dude it's so great <laughs> I'm, in a, I'm in a facebook group with a guy that the guy that leads it has been on the podcast before his name's nick he had a stroke a couple months ago and he's doing magnificently oh. for all of that but he types a little funny now obviously yeah. And somebody started going off on him today for not being able to spell. And the entire group just fucking merged on this one motherfucker, dude. I got like, someone kicked out of college for talking shit in my comments on Facebook one time. Real facts. Dude, what the fuck happened there? So there was this kid. Uh, I posted this like satire post. I said, if you smoke weed, you're a terrible person. Obviously, I smoke weed. It's a shit post. You know what I mean? Like, everyone who knows me knows that. And this kid came on there and was like, you're a fucking idiot. You're fucking, your girlfriend's fucking ugly. 
and like was just going the fuck off like on these like random tangents and shit and then like all of my because i have like a pretty extensive friends list on facebook so like all of these people started like jumping on this motherfucker and they're like you're a fucking piece of shit da, da, da. and they got buried like to the point where there's like over a thousand there was over like a thousand comments in this thread of just this one comment in my shit and my um Someone who I know, and I don't want to, I don't want to like out anyone for anything that's going on. Someone that I know knows the, uh, the director of the pro, the music program that that kid was under at a college. And he sent the screenshots to the director of that program. And then that kid got kicked out of, of that school, like two days later. Damn. Don't fuck that's with me. I got sad. connections, bro. That's <laughs> sad, <I> just <laughs> I just love it. I was like, wow, dude, you literally got kicked out of college for getting pressed about me posting something funny on the internet. Like, that really came back to bite you in the ass, bro. Like, it's just it's a, it's a small lesson people need to learn to just not be fucking stupid on the internet because it'll come back and bite you in the ass if you if it, you know, if it can. It will. Right. And, you know, uh, this has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I've been meaning to bring this up and I got to bring this up uh, before I forget again. You were part of one of my one of my top favorite memories. Oh, bet. What is you it? playing music uh, at a little concert at a uh, venue called the Cloud Springs Deli. God rest in peace. It is no yeah. longer. And uh, I'm sitting there, a buddy of mine opened for you and or open and uh, see his parents decided. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you okay, hear me? Cool. I, had to t- I had to take my uh, my headphones off because my phone's about to die. So I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't like fucked up. You're good. Yeah. But uh, as I was saying. A buddy of mine was opening up and he brought his parents around <laughs> who are the most strict sheltering Christian homeschool parents I've ever met. Yeah. And I got the opportunity to look them dead in the face as you're up on stage. All right, you motherfucking pussies. I want to see you tear this whole goddamn place apart. Fuck some shit up. <laughs> I'm always and on that their shit faces. It was just the most beautiful thing I had seen. I love that that, that you had that, that you had that memory. To be honest with you, that is that, that is phenomenal, dude. I love that so much. <laughs> up, dude? You're phenomenal. The head of the podcast. Yes. <laughs> What's up, podcast? What's up? <laughs> This is my room. Actually, that's my jail name. He's also in a uh, band who's coming out named Faust. So you should totally get him on the podcast when they get their their first single out. Because I've been, I've Hell been yeah, helping him out talk with really about that. stuff while he and the band writes really fucking ridiculously awesome music. So, Bless. hell yeah, for sure, man. We'll uh, definitely get Faust on the podcast. Hell Let's yeah. do it. Nice to meet you, Steven. Nice to meet you, man. Oh, but yeah. uh, hey, thank you, dude. Bro, you're serious for 9 That's explosive. Explosive diarrhea. Shit, the dogs are going crazy. What's up? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good, dude. Um, I don't remember what we were talking about, but yeah, I actually was going to bring up Houston a little bit here. Uh, because you are playing a show with them and they are, or Roy, uh, at least from it is a confound alumni been on the show what, before. Wait, what band again? You broke up. Sorry. Faust. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, was going to bring that up cause Roy has been on the show before oh, and I've been yeah. meaning to get a hold of him and, uh, get them boys on. Yeah. Dude, Faust is gonna be sick, bro. We uh, we we were like setting up our show, and I mean, I've been living with Chris for almost two years now, and he uh, well, Chris was the guy who just came in, but um, and he's been writing music, and he ended up just getting into this band or whatever recently, and I was like, oh hell yeah, like he found like a bunch of members who are like actually like 
down to do the damn thing. And I've been like helping them with like back end like strategy and like release strategies and stuff. Just like, you know what I mean? Like just kind of like sharing ideas and like helping the ball. Cause I've, you know, I've been through it, I guess a little bit already enough where I can help out a little bit in the beginning stages. But, uh, he, uh, got Roy and he got Nate and then he got everybody else and trip. And it was like, it's just cool that they, like we started like putting together our, uh, our headliner show. And I was like, dude, yeah, like let's, let's get fucking Faust on here, dude. Like, let's go. Cause we already had Vatican and we had filth, we had Headhunter, and then we busted. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, we we're like, dude, let's get them, you know, their first show sold out fucking busting it down, dude, you know, with the hometown boys. Plus they're like our, our band, like our band homie. You know what I mean? Like we're all friends, like our whole band, like LTS is all friends with them, been friends with all of those guys for longer than Faust has been a band. So it's like kind of cool to like, they get to come in and it's like now the, you know what I mean? It's just kind of, it's like a cool, it's a cool little like transfer. And it's like, you know, I, I think it's really rad. It's like, you know, we've started to get bigger, and then now there's another band who's coming out that I totally, you know, we all believe that can do, you know, just exactly what we're doing, you know? And, you know, they, we can just kind of, like, put them on our fucking headliner show, like, since it's a thing, and it's like the hometown homies, you know, they get a little spark off, and then we start, you know, doing more shit, and I think, like, it's cool. I think the more the local scene needs a little bit more of that, too, you know? If bands start right. to get a little bit bigger you know, lift up some other bands around you that you think are cool and have potential, you know? It's not always like a crawl over each other to the top. It's also like, you know, maybe you pull someone up that has a step stool and you can get higher. You know what I mean? You never know. That's the way you do it, man, is nobody... These days, you know, it used to... It might have used to go, on, go like, you know, step on people to get where you are, but these days, you're not getting anywhere doing that especially with cancel culture and everything, you just kind of, it's like, it's all very like, you got to treat every, well, not just because of cancel culture, you should treat everybody with respect regardless. But I just mean like, it's, it's a lot more punishable for people who want to play the rock star and who are like, Oh yeah, I'm the fucking shit. Like fuck everybody else kind of mentality. Like they're not going to get very far, especially in today's social climate. So it's like, you know, Music evolves, the industry evolves, and that's just how it is now. You got to, like, uplift everybody around you. And, like, if you get a good community, that's how that's how good local scenes are formed. And, like, I'm, I'm at a point now, I feel like any local scene in the United States or adjacent Canada, Mexico, whatever local scene in metal, they could thrive right now. If they really put stuff into it and they were, like, sick, we're going to, like, revitalize the scene. And they started getting younger people to come out to shows and they started like, you know, really pushing like and doing groundwork, and, like hanging flyers up around Atlanta and like doing things because people are so st show starved. It's so, it would be so easy to get people to come out to your shows. And if you're, you know, getting ground traffic and getting people to come to your shows and stuff like those people are going to tell more friends and then they're going to bring friends. And then you're just you, you get to a point again where there's this underground scene where you're like local bands could sell out. 200 250 150 to 200 fucking cap rooms if they wanted to you know what i mean not like starting mm -hmm. off you can't just be a brand new band and be like yeah we just sold out you know what i mean like it's, it doesn't have to work yeah. like that but like you know for sure like if you're if you're grinding the local scene i don't see why locals to establish locals couldn't be selling i mean dude we're not necessarily a local band anymore but i mean we're that's our first headliner like head, hometown headlining show it's sold out in three weeks you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, yeah. you know, that's, that's, that is a, 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 not easy, but it's a feasible thing for people to do. You know, there's, it's definitely, it's an option on the table. It's just a matter of putting in the groundwork and like grind to actually go and do it. You know, a lot of people are lazy and they just want to depend on other people to do stuff for them. And that's another thing about uh, you and left to suffer is, you know, quarantine hit and you guys went to fucking work. You're like, we're not going to sit back. We're going to prepare a way for us to blow up even bigger once these shows start rolling back in. And that's what you know, you've done. You know, you sold you out. Look, your you got to look at it like this, right? So you have those those opening bands on, like, big tours that you see. I'm not going to name any bands or anything. I'm just saying, like, you see, like, the opening bands who are on, like, 
fit for a king or you know whatever like big just chelsea grant white chapel like the opening heavy bands that were opening up tours like that and they you know they get to a point where pa- the pandemic hits and they shut down like what do you what do you you at, at that point in time you have to build your band you're still relying on opening slots because you got hype. So you have to maintain your hype because if you go through a pandemic and lose your hype, which a lot of bands did, like they'll just go, they went through a whole pandemic, didn't release anything, kind of just took the back seat and they're just like, Oh yeah, you know, we'll, you know, write and we'll release stuff whenever shows come back around, dude, that's, it's been over a year now. You know what I mean? And so if you're sitting idle for a year, people are going to move on. There's been other bands who have been come out during the, the pandemic or have been like us releasing stuff all the way through the pandemic and just like outwork, you know, there, uh, there's bands out there that want it and they will outwork you if you let them, you know? Yeah. And so once, once those bands hit the end of, of the pandemic, they're not going to be the bands who have hype and they're going to be looked at for opening these tours. And that's why we got the immediately when tours came back around, Body Snatcher hit us up. They're like, yo, dude, let's go. And I'm like, hell yeah, opening up that. And that's why Lorna Shore hit us up. And they were like, hey, man, like you guys are crushing it right now. Like, let's play our you play our, our first shows back. And I was like, hell yeah, let's do that. And we're still getting looks for tours and stuff for next year, you know. So it's just you got to get it. That's that's just a, a, a staple right there. And it's just like the facts are like the proof is in the pudding, dude. You just have to put in the work and the stuff will follow it up. You know, it's just like it's it is a constant grind and it is not it's not easy. <laughs> because even and with really you, bad. I've been trying to schedule a podcast with you for forever now. You know what I mean? So it's like and I yeah. just keep having to be like, I feel so bad all the time. I'm like, dude, God, this guy's gonna fucking hate me, bro. Like I've just been like <laughs> I've been like just neglecting this dude, and it's not even a it is like not even like I'm not trying to, you know what I mean? But that's oh, dude, why like- because left to suffer is such a workhorse. That it takes up about ninety five percent of my my day and my week and my life, you know. And you got to think too. When I first met you at that uh, Cloud Springs Deli show, I was nothing and nobody. And now, I've got a couple, you know, uh, bands that have wanted to come on the show since then, That's and sick. it really wouldn't have done you any good coming on my show back then. It would have done me great, but it wouldn't have done you any good. So I don't blame you, dude. I'm glad you're actually finally here, and I'm Not glad. Not necessarily that, uh, even about that, bro. I just liked you as a person. I thought you were cool. Hell yeah. And I was like, and I just don't like, I'm a very socially aware person, and I just don't like when people don't like me, I guess, if that makes any weird thing. So I felt like I was, I was like annoying you. By like doing being busy and stuff, and I just felt really bad about it. But yeah, that's no, just my I've never had anything so. bad to say about <laughs> you, man. Yeah, yeah, well, I appreciate that. You Thanks. uh you seem like a real great person, at least from social media and from the conversations we've had. And I'm just glad that we kept talking it out and that uh I, to, I didn't man, but uh, you know, one sad thing I was thinking about is you were talking about all the uh, bands grinding and releasing stuff or or the bands not grinding and releasing stuff during quarantine. And the sad part is I've seen a lot of bands that could have done your thing, but their record label was telling them, no, nah, we got to wait till tours start again. Yeah, that's why uh, I'm also a firm believer in don't fucking sign a record deal, dude. <laughs> Just stay independent. We're independent, and we're making all the money off of our music right now. So, I, don't, I mean, we're making a, enough where we're about to buy a brand new van in Hell yeah. a month to go on tour. Like, brand new. Like, zero miles, dealership miles, like, straight up off the lot. Like, we're gonna go drop it, deposit cash in hand. Yo, run it. We need a new van. And then we're gonna Might need a new trailer, too. Huh? Uh, Might need a new trailer, too. After that show, uh, y'all couldn't get it hooked up, and my buddy had to save y'all's ass. that was a U-Haul. That was a U-Haul, dude. Oh, that was a U-Haul? Oh, shit. Yeah, that was fucked. I hated that so much. 
And that was because, oh my God, it was because our guitarist taped it and it melted the tape to the fucking thing. And oh my God, that was such a bad night. But the show was sick. But the, yeah. I just remember you being the ballsiest guy I've ever seen and just spark up on the side of the gas station. I'm like, this guy's got balls. I like it. <laughs> oh, dude, I don't give a fuck, dude. <laughs> I was just like, oh, fuck, fuck this, dude. I'm going over here to smoke a cigarette. Like, but yeah, it's uh, it's been a long time since then, and I'm glad to see Left to Suffer popping off like it has, man. Thank uh, you. Real proud to be able to call you a friend at this point after That's all good. of our uh, talking back and forth. And hell, if we didn't talk back and forth as long as we did, I wouldn't really know you. Yeah, honestly. It would have just been one of those one and done podcasts, and then peace. Well, you know? the world the world works in mysterious ways, and a new friendship was born, my guy. Oh, <laughs> but so we're running near out of our time, Taylor. Is there anything specific that you want to talk about, or anything that you want to say to the fans? Keep rocking the motherfucking free world, baby. Peace and love. <laughs> That's all I gotta say, straight up. <laughs> Oh, wait, I almost forgot because I'm contractually obligated at this point. I always have to ask because we are a nerd podcast at its core that for some reason has bands on. I got to ask, who's the nerdiest member of Left to Suffer? Jacob, our lead guitarist, for sure, hands down. He plays like Magic the Gathering. We all watch yeah, like anime yeah. and stuff. Jacob's probably second. I'm probably third. And then Christian and then Alex would probably be the nerdiest out of, yeah. So like, cause I watch like, you know, I've watched anime and, but yeah, Jacob is like, plays Magic the Gathering and like loves fucking Dragon Ball Z and like just all this, like he, he's, he's the guy for sure. Y'all ever going to drop a sick track about anime? Seen a lot of rappers do it. It's time that some metalheads did it, man. You know, I might, I might, I might, I might, uh. I might think about it. I might. We might throw it in there. You never know. We're we're pretty much off. We're off the wall with pretty much everything we do. So yeah, it's uh. You never quite know what a left to suffer song is going to entail lyrically. Nope. <laughs> it's like, uh, man, you're you're uh you're friends with the Sleep Waker guys, right? I literally was just playing like before I got on here. I was playing. I was playing a round of Warzone with with Hunter, their vocalist. Nice. Uh, I had Frankie on the show a I couple weeks ago. I was They're sick. blown away to figure out that he's like, "Yeah, we write about the Matrix and Star Wars and Firefly." I'm like, what the yeah, fuck? They are, they are very, very, uh, very nerdy, very nerdy band, but they're sick. They're amazing. But speaking of war zone, gotta hit me up sometime and carry my ass through a match. Dude, bet I'm down. Run it for real. I play every fucking day now or every night, but yeah. Let's do it. Hit me up sometime today or tomorrow, bro. Bet sounds good, brother. All right. And as always, stay saucy, you ho bags. This has been the Confound Millennial, starring Stephen Sturvin Michaels and featuring Taylor Barber of Left to Suffer. Yeah.